Hello again, this is Oliver and welcome back to yet another video, short video where I explain different analysis techniques for Sudoku. If you like my videos, be sure and give me the thumbs up and you might think of subscribing as well, be greatly appreciated. Right, this is a nice interesting one, they call it the Sashimi. I have no idea where that name came from, but it's uh, it's what I, what I see it called and we'll stick with it. Now, if you don't know much about the X-Wing, I strongly recommend go back to either video seven in the series, which explains the basic X-Wing. And there should be a link up there in the top right hand corner of your screen to jump back there. Or if you want to go a little bit further, the finned X-Wing, have a look at that as well. Also a very important one. But now this one is the sashimi. You know that the X-Wing is made up of four corners. And in each one of those corners, there is a candidate, one of our possibilities. If we're using rows as the base, then we find two rows that just have two of those candidates in each one of the rows. I am looking here at the possible eight. And if we look at this row here, no, this column here, column seven, we can see that there are two eights there in J7 and F7. And if we move over to the left, then we start running along to column six, column five, column four. We have an eight and an eight, that's looking nice. Or if we have column five, we have an F5 that lines up with the F7. And the other ones don't line up. Okay, one of the problems here is you're allowed to have a fly in the ointment, as we call it, in one of the houses, but not in both houses. So this one is no good because we have a fly in the ointment here. And then we've got another one up here, so that doesn't really work. Go on to the next one. Okay, this is looking a bit better. We've got the 88. The Nothing here, but we have an 8 here and other rubbish. Well, now we could also be going this way. We'd be going on the rows. So we've got two here. And as we move up, well, there's a load of extra ones here. All right. So let's get the basics right. We're taking these two as being our base column. And we're going to look for another column. Well, that's one. And here's the other one. But there's no five. There's no eight here. That doesn't matter we're still going to be able to get rid of something. So let's see how this is going to work. So this is known as the sashimi, is where you don't even have your eight in here. And then you want to look and see, do we have a fin? Well, this is the fin up here. All right, so we our bases, our columns, and we have a fin up here. And we're trying to get rid of stuff then in the rows. If the bases are columns, then we get rid of stuff in the rows. If the base was a row, then we get rid of stuff in the columns. That's the basic way of looking at it. So what happens here? Right, well, let's look at our different possibilities. Now, as I mentioned in the finned uh, X-Wing in tutorial eight, we look at the fin and we decide if it's true, what happens? If it's false, what happens? If the fin, and this is the fin up here, if that is true, then this eight is false and that eight is false. That's if it's true. Now, if that is false, we only have one eight here. So that must be true. If that's true, that's false. If that's false, that's true. Therefore, this must be false. So irrespective of whether this fin is true or false, this one will always be false. And that's the one we can get rid of. Now, this is why it's important that we can only have the fly in the ointment in one house. That allows the rest of the X-Wing to work and to allow us to get rid of one cell. So this is the cell that we get rid of. Okay, I hope that's made some sense to you. I will do another sashimi where we have maybe a double fin up here. Okay, but that's it for now and Slant Hamlin, I'll see you in another day with another tutorial.